Welcome to Opalest TV. Today I'm in Montreal together with Chris Eddy. Chris is the founder and CEO of Castle Hall. Castle Hall has been since 2006 a global leader in operational due diligence on alternative investment managers. This year, Castle Hall has also introduced a revolutionary platform called Diligence Exchange, which offers amazing benefits for both investors, but also investment managers. And we go into this in a moment. The platform has already been adopted by some of the world's largest investors. But before we go there, Chris, please introduce yourself and give us some background about Castle Hall. Castle Hall was founded in 2006 and over the 15 year plus of our history we are very proud to have been able to work with more than 200 investors worldwide and become the largest uh, diligence firm that is dedicated to supporting the diligence efforts of uh, investors across, across the industry. We're very pleased to have built a global footprint. Uh, our headquarters are here in, uh, in Montreal, where thankfully it's not snowing at the moment. Uh, we also have coverage uh, across uh, Europe, the Middle East and into Australia. Our overall team has grown to be more than 90 professionals and we're certainly looking forward to uh, reaching the 100 professional mark. And I think our biggest point of uh, differentiation and what we're particularly proud of in Castle Hall has just been the scope of diligence that we've been able to complete over the years on behalf of our clients. Originally starting just with hedge funds, we now cover all asset classes across both uh, public and private alternatives as well as long-only traditional stocks, uh, stocks and bonds. And our coverage of uh, due diligence exposure to asset managers and GPs uh, is considerably more than 2,000 managers worldwide. So we have uh, quite a lot of experience and footprint of seeing where the industry is, seeing what is a leading practice, seeing where asset managers are lagging, and helping our clients ultimately deliver better investment outcomes through more effective due diligence. So Chris, how has due diligence changed or evolved over all those years? you have been doing it, or where are we now and what's left to do? Diligence has changed a lot. Uh, I did my first due diligence review in my career before Castle Hall back in 1997. So I think it's been 25 years uh, asking asset managers questions about their operational controls and procedures. Uh, and of course, the key watershed moment was the global financial crisis in 2008. Before 2008, operational due diligence was focused on hedge funds. Uh, in the aftermath of Lipper, Lancer, Kea, or Bayou, uh, etc. Uh, and it was very much optional. Uh, some investors were focused on ODD and others uh, didn't include that into their investment uh, process. Uh, of course, in 2008, there was a gentleman called Bernie Madoff, and as a result, um, due diligence on public market hedge funds uh, has really become a mandatory, well established, and I think relatively mature process uh, over the past uh, 10 to 15, uh, 10 plus years uh, since the GFC. There have been some other significant changes though. Due diligence was traditionally a static point in time process that was really based on a report. So at the point that an investment was made, a new manager was proposed for introduction into the portfolio, we would say, well, do we have the due diligence on that manager when we're underwriting that, that new investment? One of the key changes for due diligence is to move to a process of active, ongoing monitoring. Due diligence is, first of all, not only about completing uh, diligence when a new manager is introduced into the portfolio. It's about monitoring and maintaining oversight over all of the existing relationships and then maintaining an appropriate cadence and frequency of how frequently should I be aware of things that are evolving and changing with respect to a manager's circumstance, their fund, their operations, their business. I always like to say the first rule of due diligence is don't be surprised. So it's a really good idea to be able to keep in touch with what's happening with an asset manager, what is changing. So I think point one is diligence has moved from static to dynamic. It's moved from point in time to continual. The second major change in due diligence is an expansion of asset classes. 
So again, traditionally, due diligence was about hedge funds. It was a narrow domain in the specific niche of public market alternatives. But ultimately, for an asset owner, for a large institutional investor, a pension fund, a sovereign wealth fund, a superannuation fund, ultimately, they're a fiduciary. They are delegating their asset management process when they elect to invest with a third-party asset manager. And irrespective of the asset class, the asset manager, the asset owner rather, needs to have an understanding and an ability to make sure that they are not being exposed to undue risk as a result of their investment with a particular asset, uh, asset firm, wherever they may be in the world. So from due diligence being just about hedge funds, due diligence is now uh, across all asset classes. And at Castle Hall, we are now complete a majority of our work on private market funds, both uh, private equity as well as real estate, infrastructure, uh, venture capital, uh, and uh, private credit. We also do an increasing amount of work with respect to long only structures, either through public or private funds, as well as through, uh, as well as through managed accounts. What a multi-asset class approach does require is flexibility, because clearly the risks of a long only managed account held at your global custodian are potentially different than a co-investment with a large private equity firm or an allocation to a venture capital fund. Clearly, the risk of a portfolio with complex derivatives is very different from the risks of a portfolio holding farmland investments. So I think there is need for a calibrated, flexible approach to due diligence, and that's a further move away from that traditional one-size-fits-all of, of where is my report. Uh, and I think the third element that's changed really brings together those two themes. Traditionally, due diligence could be done from anywhere in the world as long as you had a copy of Word and a spreadsheet and a laptop. It was a very manual, boutique process. What we need when we are completing due diligence on potentially hundreds of asset manager relationships across multiple asset classes is technology. So where Castle Hall has really moved our business over a probably a decade long initiative is to think about how we can adapt fintech and bring in technology solutions to support every aspect of due diligence from the initial allocation through to the ongoing monitoring through to the identify, identification of risks. And we really believe that, that fintech technology is the key to a modern forward-looking due diligence approach. Ultimately, it's the institutional approach to due diligence. So um, while, we do, uh, while we may have worked as an accountant, I've worked for many years on spreadsheets and look writing Word documents, we feel that the technology solution really bringing in on board the power of database analytics that's really the, uh, the forward-looking approach that investors are now requiring when they maintain their oversight over portfolios as a fiduciary. Well, what we built is Diligence Exchange. And as you said in your introduction, that is a service and a platform that Castle Hall formally launched earlier, uh, earlier in 2022. And what Diligence Exchange does is leverage technology in two ways. Uh, first of all, with respect to the efficiency in the due diligence process, and then with respect to the intelligence, the insights that, come, that can come from uh, the conduct of, of due diligence. With respect to efficiency, at the moment, there are many hundreds of investors in the world that will use their own due diligence questionnaire, request for proposal, request information from asset managers. And in many instances, that process is manual. It could be with spreadsheets. It could be with an online survey tool. Uh, but it involves gathering information on a very individual, bespoke, and inherently duplicative basis. What Diligence Exchange does is allow Castle Hall to gather consistent standard reference data on thousands of different fund entities and managers GPs as requested by our, uh, by our client base. And what we do is work with a consistent database, a consistent structure of data, gather data the same way and inherently bring efficiencies and economies of scale to the data gathering and data collection process on behalf of, half of our clients. And instead of spreadsheets and Word documents and manual follow-ups, we have a centralized research database 
that allows our clients to gather information consistently and the same scope and methodology for every asset manager and general partner and fund in their portfolio, irrespective of asset class. So that's really the purpose of bringing efficiency and leveraging a database, leveraging a standard data structure to support the due diligence process. When we come to data intelligence, Castle Hall's benefit, of course, is we work on behalf of a consortium of more than 200 clients. And that gives us exposure to several thousand fund entities across the industry. If every investor works individually, they can, of course, gather a picture of their own portfolio. But what Castle Hall can do is bring together a standard approach that aggregates the collective investment footprint of all of our clients and consequently gathers consistent information on a much larger data set, a much larger portfolio of, of information. So the other aspect of our technology, we first of course use database and consistent data gathering techniques to get that standard data set. But then with our technology, we can then apply a set of proprietary algorithms and what our algorithms do is identify risk factors that are in place with respect to every asset manager and every fund. So we can say, for example, uh, has this asset manager had a cybersecurity breach? Have they changed a service provider? Do they not have a outsourced, uh, do they have not have a dedicated chief compliance officer? Do they not have a fund administrator? Do they not have a valuation committee? Have they changed their ownership structure? In total, there's more than 200. Uh, analytical factors that can be triggered by our algorithm. So for any individual manager and fund that one of a, a diligence exchange subscriber looks at, they're able to identify and gather insights to what is the risk profile, what are the risk characteristics of a particular, uh, particular manager or fund. But because the information is gathered consistently, we can then roll that up to look at a portfolio. And by using technology, we can then interrogate the data, mine the data across a full portfolio to say, well, how many of my managers use a particular service provider? How many of my funds have an expense ratio in excess of a predetermined limit? How many of my private equity managers have broken deal fees? Really to be able to run through a sense of looking at a portfolio and fundamentally change the way that in-house teams complete due diligence to be thinking about exceptions. What we want to do is complete the data, gather the information, and then allow our clients to look at the results. Is a risk triggered in a way that is expected? Or is a risk triggered to say, that's something a little bit unusual, I wasn't expecting that. Let me then compare that to other funds in the portfolio. And again, with a tech platform, we can see a risk factor and then say, which other managers or funds in my portfolio have the same characteristic? But I have to say that the real benefit of using a standardized approach in technology is to roll everything through to industry benchmarks. Because if we gather data in the same way for thousands of fund entities, we can have a picture of the overall ecosystem and industry best practices across all of those different risk factor uh, dimensions. So our clients using Diligence Exchange, first of all, can see the risks for an individual manager and fund. Secondly, they can see how that rolls up to the risk profile of their overall portfolio. And then they can compare that to the Castle Hall's proprietary Diligence Exchange benchmarks. So you mentioned a fintech approach to due diligence. How does this look like? Or in other words, what, what have you built? What a diligence exchange subscription provides is access to our entire research database. So we certainly think that is the, uh, or I believe that that is the largest uh, research database that's available in the industry. It's significantly more than 2,500 fund entities closing in on 2,000 different manager or GP, uh, GP structures. So the first thing that a uh, subscriber sees is the list of the asset managers that are under coverage. 
Uh, and the way that diligence exchange works is that each uh, subscriber uh, looks at a manager and sees a fund entity which is in their portfolio or of potential interest for uh, future investment. Uh, and then they raise a connection request with the asset manager in the LinkedIn style. The connection request is approved. And at that point, they then have access to the diligence exchange report on that particular uh, asset manager and fund. And every diligence exchange report, first of all, is our standard reference data uh, on the manager and fund entity. We also complete, it's not purely a, a due diligence questionnaire, just manager supplied data. A key part of our process is we complete a range of trust but verify checks. Uh, those include service provider verifications, they include verification to public domain information such as regulatory and corporate registration sources. We think it is very important when looking at data to make sure it is verified as a core anti-fraud check. So we may say we check A to B, B to C, C to D and D back to A to make sure that the representations made by the asset manager can be verified in the public domain, again, as a key protection, uh, protection against fraud. And then with the verified reference data, then our clients receive the, um, the results of our diligence algorithm. And the algorithm, as we mentioned uh, a few minutes ago, provides, first of all, a list and a matrix of risks for a particular manager and fund that can then be rolled up to a portfolio level and then compared to the aggregate diligence exchange industry benchmark. And it, it's really there that the insights come. What are the risks for my particular manager? Is that an outlier in my portfolio? And then how does my portfolio stack up to the aggregate industry? Again, our clients are fiduciaries. So a key part of running a portfolio, an institutional pool of uh, assets as a fiduciary investor is really to have that sense that there is a clear understanding and oversight over asset managers. We're aware of our risks. We're not taking unknown and unexpected risks where we have a particular concentration or exposure that clearly is an outlier and out of line of expectations and out of line with the overall risk parameters that we are prepared, uh, prepared, to, uh, prepared to accept. Um, an important part of diligence exchange, obviously we, we have uh, several thousand uh, asset managers and funds already completed based on the aggregate investment footprint of the consortium of Castle Hall clients. Obviously, this is a huge industry. There are tens of thousands of asset managers. Now, Diligence Exchange already includes information on about 30,000 asset managers, which is based on information we've pulled from the form ADV and uh, US regulatory filings. But irrespective of the asset manager and fund, if a client um, a subscriber has an allocation to another manager uh, that is not currently under coverage, uh, a standard subscription uh, allows unlimited capability to add add additional managers uh, to the portfolio to make sure that a portfolio view is complete. Uh, as an accountant, I always do like to make sure that ultimately every investment in a fund, uh, in a portfolio, has the appropriate due diligence. I can tick them all, I can tie them to the balance sheet. If internal audit, external audit, compliance, risk, a regulator comes in, we're not negligent, our process is compliant we have consistent information for every manager and every fund that uh, to uh, which we've deployed capital. So Chris, I understand that for the first time in the diligence domain, the diligence exchange platform allows to aggregate data, intelligence, and benchmarks across the entire industry. Tell us why is that so revolutionary? Well, from my side, I, I think I mentioned at the beginning of our conversation that I've personally been doing due diligence for about 25 years. And I think the holy grail is really to bring more transparency to the industry. We, we work in alternatives in an industry which is opaque, uh, where data is difficult to gather. And I'm sure there are other due diligence pra pra practitioners listening to this conversation. We've all been told by asset managers that we are the first to ask a question, that we are the only investor that is raising a concern. All of our other investors are happy. And I don't think there is a simple answer to a complex question. But 
to be able to bring evidence to a, a diligence discussion. It moves it away from a qualitative view of experience and preference to a tangible evidence data point of industry behavior. So let's take something as simple as, do I have a valuation, uh, evaluation committee? Do I have a valuation committee which is separately constituted and meets on a regular basis to look at the valuations of the portfolio? Um, in many instances in the private equity space, for example, uh, there isn't a valuation committee, but there may be a, a portfolio, an investment committee, a portfolio governance committee, a management committee. So uh, a forum typically uh, primarily of investment professionals who amongst their responsibilities uh, will uh, take account of valuation every month or every quarter as appropriate for that, for that portfolio. Um, and it's very difficult to have a conversation with an asset manager to challenge or provide an alternate perspective that the way that works for them in the sense of how they operate their business and think about their investment process, um, it's difficult to challenge that. Um, what we can do with diligence exchange benchmarks is to say, if we are thinking about standardized controls and procedures, what are best practices, what are the expectations of investors who are deploying their capital to a third party asset manager, what procedures are in place? And in my mind, and the diligence exchange data would support this, it is best practice to have a separate valuation committee because that allows valuations to be considered separately uh, as distinct from combined and rolled into an aggregate discussion about the portfolio as a whole from an investment perspective. And importantly, it creates a governance and risk, governance risk and compliance forum that's separate from the investment process creates a degree of segregation of duties or at least a degree of separation of intent and purpose in how the valuations are going to be reported to, uh, to investors, to LPs in a, in a private equity fund. And I picked that example at, at random. Uh, Diligence Exchange has once more several hundred data points where analytics are being generated, but it empowers our clients to be able to have an evidence discussion with an asset manager to move away from individual opinion to an objective benchmark as to industry behavior and identify asset managers, not necessarily a case of being right or wrong, but certainly a case of being able to identify who's leading and who's lagging. So we've seen that the benchmarks and the intelligence that can be derived through the diligence exchange platform is truly revolutionary. But in addition to that, I think that there are also fundamental gains in terms of efficiency, right? Operational efficiencies for both investors and investment managers. So tell us more about that aspect too. That's really important to us in, in, in where we see the, the industry. Um, we, we really do think that due diligence has become very duplicative. And ultimately, when Castle Hall works with uh, an investor client, we're not outsourcing due diligence, we're co-sourcing due diligence. So the question is, when we work with a client, how can that investor use the work that our team performs to help them do their job better? And that really comes back to what's the highest and best use of time? How can our clients move up the value chain to be able to bring higher value oversight and insight to the understanding, the diligence profile of the, the asset managers that they, uh, that they are looking at? And, and we really do think it, 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 diligence is very, very duplicative. Um, investors sending their own data gathering questionnaires, uh, again, Excel spreadsheets or using one of the various online survey tools, um, that allows data to be gathered, but it's extremely time consuming. We have uh, a large manager could have a hundred uh, investors asking for questions. It's extremely time consuming from the asset manager GPs, of course, who are responding to information. Now, we certainly firmly believe that, that every investor has higher value questions that may well be unique to their organization. Um, but that's where we'd like to help 
our clients spend and focus their time. So in other words, spend 80% of the time on the 20% of issues and facts that matter, not spend 80% of the time getting to those 20%. And indeed, while, uh, while every DDQ, there are meaningful questions that really are getting to the crux of risk, on the other hand, at least the first 50% of due diligence, it is the same for everybody. So what is the asset management company called at a corporate level? What are its affiliates? Where does it have its offices? What's the biography of the chief compliance officer? Who's the auditor? Who's the administrator? Who's the valuation service provider? What's the percentage of the assets in level three? What accounting system do they use? Have they had a cybersecurity breach? These basic questions can be gathered in a more effective manner if they are uh, gathered externally by uh, essentially, a, in, in some ways, Castle Hall is acting here as an industry utility to gather information on behalf of that consortium of 200 plus clients and the feedback we very consistently receive is that instead of having one two three four junior analysts who are really um, res uh, responsible for that that process to reach out for questionnaires to follow up when they make sure responses are provided it can take hundreds of hours for larger clients. It's simply not the highest and best use of time for that internal team. We want the internal team to start their due diligence process already halfway through. They've got the data, they can log into Diligence Exchange, see the Diligence Exchange report, the immediate risks that have been identified, the Trust But Verify uh, work has been completed, and they're kicking off with a clear understanding of the framework, the baseline of the asset manager, and can immediately move up to say, what are the issues that I want to dig into in more detail that are going to materially impact my investment decision? Is there a risk here which makes me uncomfortable? Are there risks that I can mitigate? Or can I demonstrate that this is an entirely suitable manager that really meets our profile and is gonna generate great alpha for our portfolio?